G'day. Today we're going to be drawing the zebra. Now, it's an interesting animal because of that really jarred black and white pattern. And you're also going to learn a few facts about the zebra as well. So, let's get to it. G'day, I'm Bill Flowers and today we're drawing the zebra. I'm starting off with grey paper so I can use white gouache and Indian ink. The other tools we're going to use, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm starting off with some shapes here, sort of horse shapes, moving in the body, the back leg muscle. You can see those are very basic shapes, very similar to what you'd see in a how to draw horse books. It does seem very horse-like, although these guys are actually more closely related to donkeys and things like that. In fact, the crossbreed of this and a donkey is called a zonkey, and they can also be very stubborn, which is why they're not usually domesticated. Now popping in the muscles of the leg here, making sure everything's there. You can sort of see I've sort of shaped the head a bit like a horse, probably just a little bit cuter than a horse, I guess, a bit like a pony. And you can see I've sort of put basically where the stripes are and I've wrapped the stripes around the body to describe the body. Now I'm using some Indian ink. And I'm using my favorite brush, which is a small liner brush. You can see it's got very long bristles. Always like to do a little test on a little sheet or a little something rather than going straight onto it to make sure that's flowing right and then it's right into it. So the zebra is very interesting and beautiful animal. It's quite gorgeous. It's stunning to look at and there's been lots of speculations as to what those stripes are about. So I've read a few things, it's about, it's about temperature control. I'm not sure if I agree with it, but you know, the white obviously keeps the animal cool and the black will warm up. But because it's all over, I don't quite understand how that works, unless there's some sort of circular thing happening to keep it an even temperature. The other theory is that it repels flies. They've noticed with experiments that uh, horses are more likely to have flies on them than zebras. Although zebras uh, swish that tail around quite violently. Uh, it is believed that as the fly goes towards the zebra, it gets confused, tries to fly in between the bars, knocks against the zebra, and then it flies off rather than landing. So it's a bit of confusion. Okay, my own theory is that it's a, uh, a kind of confusion for predators. If it's going to confuse a fly, it's got to confuse a predator. Now, I don't say this with any authority as a zoologist, but as a visual artist, one of the things I've studied is op art. And that's sort of creating optical illusions. And here's an example of Bridget Riley's op art. Now, when zebras run away from predators. They run in a zigzag motion, not a straight line. Now, if a predator is trying to outflank a group of zebras, or even just one, what it's going to get, if it's going up the side, is that the zebra is moving from side to side, is moving closer and further away and just moving already, it looks like a Bridget Riley painting, it's going to cause extra confusion to the point where it's going to be just downright irritating. I've shown my students pictures of op art and some students have said they can't look at it. So I think that's really interesting. Like I say, I'm not a zoologist or a biologist. I'm just a visual artist and maybe I'm getting too much empathy for the lions and the cheetahs and the leopards, but it does cause sort of a bizarre thing happening to the eye, especially when moving. So pop down in the comments section what you think. Do you think my theory holds water or do you think I'm just you know, a stupid artist? You can see as I'm inking, I am trying to wrap it around the body. The lines actually help describe the body really well. It's one of the nice things about drawing zebras. Still using that fine liner. Give it a good rinse out. And then I'm going to go on with gouache. Gouache is a bit like watercolor, but it's a little bit more opaque. 
and I always squeeze it out of the tube fresh when I use gouache. So it makes it like a really nice solid watercolor. And I'm trying to work in the highlights of the body. And as it wraps around the body, it goes down into a bit more of a gray. So right now it's about where it's hitting the body, where it's hitting up at the top of the body to get those bright highlights. When you're drawing this, you go try and ignore the fact that it's got stripes because you're still trying to get the form in there. I'm going to use a Derwent Ink Tense pencil. I'll try a bit of this in the background. Just experimenting a little bit here. I thought I'd just put a little tiny hint or a touch. But as I moved on, I decided I'm going to put a bit more using a wide brush throwing a bit more watercolour on, but I want to put it very blocky as if I don't care. Because I don't want people to concentrate on the background, I want them to look at the actual zebra itself. I want it to really stand out from the background. So that's why I'm just sort of giving a little bit of an impression. In fact, the pencil bits, I'm trying to get rid of those now. Probably should have just gone straight to watercolour. But whenever I do these, I have this 90-10% uh, rule I give myself where 90% of the time I know exactly what I'm doing. I've done it hundreds of times before But 10% I want to experiment keep life interesting Otherwise, it'd be boring if I didn't experiment. So I've almost finished the zebra picture. I just like to say Thank you. Just in a moment. I will finish this but right now. I just want to say thank you for your support For your feedback your comments and your thumbs up. Thanks guys. I'm finishing off the details with a Copic marker. Just need to strengthen up a few bits around the hooves because it was looking a bit weak. So strengthening that up and I'll probably even put a few lines down on the ground, just a few little details here and there just to make it look cool. Sharpening up a few bits and I think there we have it. And let's end with one more fun fact about the zebra. The ancient Romans used to call them tiger horses. That's pretty cool. And that's the end of the video. Here is the next video to watch. Go on, click it. It's called binge watching. Enjoy.